friends, how you doing? Eric Euless here. Let's talk about searching for D.B. Cooper's missing evidence. Okay, to start off with, when I discuss D.B. Cooper's missing evidence, what I'm referencing are the two parachutes that he jumped with, the attache case that ostensibly carried the bomb, as well as the missing 194000 bucks of D.B. Cooper's ransom. So in the next few days, I'll be heading up to Vancouver, Washington to continue my dig at Tina Bar that I started a few months back looking for these items. Now, it's important to note that this spot that I'm searching at isn't just some spot that I pulled out of thin air. There's actually, you know, a, a rationale and methodology to this particular spot, and I'll explain that right now. So, and I'll do that by telling a story. So... Back in 1980, when Brian Ingram found the money, obviously the FBI converged on Tina Bar and started digging around the original money find spot to see if there's anything else they could find. Perhaps some more money, perhaps the parachutes, perhaps uh, the briefcase, perhaps D.B. Cooper's body himself, something, anything. And they came away finding absolutely nothing. Well, after a few days of searching, they, you know, folded up shop and enrolled. The problem is, is they didn't record the precise spot that the money was found. Now, this got to be a real big problem in the intervening decades. And the reason why is because there's been an enormous amount of erosion that has taken place at Tina Bar between 1980 and today, you know, 42 years later. In fact, the beach has been completely reshaped and looks absolutely nothing like it did back then in 1980. So the problem started when researchers like myself started looking at Tina Bar and the money find spot. We knew that the money had been found on Tina Bar. We just didn't know precisely where on Tina Bar the money had been found. Now Tina Bar is a stretch of beach that's about 2,200 feet. So there's a pretty big you know, length of beach there to work with. So in, 20, in 2018 rather, I decided, I decided, I'll get this out, having a little bit of a tough time with the tongue this morning. Uh, in 2018, I decided to start looking into this to see if I could identify the precise money find spot. And I went about this by looking at old uh, footage from 1980, the, the, the dig uh, by the FBI, also some helicopter news footage that took place during 1980. I started looking at Google Earth images of the area and some other high altitude uh, aircraft images uh, from the county, part of that geological survey that they do of the area every year. And over the course of several months, looking at all these pictures very, very closely and working with landmarks, things that existed in 1980 that still exist today, or at least back in 2018, I was actually able to identify the precise money find spot within five or 10 feet. And that may not seem important, but it's actually critically important. Now there's one interesting thing that took place as I was looking at all these images and doing this, this research. And that was that I noticed that the FBI, when digging along Tina Bar, they dug about 100 yards north and 100 yards south of where the money was found. And they also dug from the money find spot, which is about 45 feet from the water's edge, down toward the water's edge itself, down toward the Columbia River. However, I noticed that there was one part of the beach that they did not search, and I really don't know why. And that part of the beach was from the money find spot going up the beach toward this small dirt road. There was a small dirt road that still exists today. It's probably half gone from erosion, but it's the actual road that the FBI used to access Tina Bar. Now, for some reason, the FBI did not search the spot from where the money was found up toward that dirt road, which is also about 40 or 45 feet of what was then beach, but is no longer beach. Now, why that's important is because I also noted that there were two very conspicuous trees uh, on the beach in 1980 that appeared to 
mark the spot where the money was found. And it just stands to reason that if D.B. Cooper is going to bury these items on Tina Bar, he has to have some sort of landmarks to work with if he expects to come back at a later date and retrieve these items. So I started thinking about the parachutes that had never been found in the attache case that had never been found. And I started thinking about that money burial spot in particular. And ultimately, I came to believe that D.B. Cooper landed very near Tina Bar and that he opted to bury the stuff at Tina Bar because he couldn't very well haul this stuff, the money in particular, back into town, back into Vancouver, Washington. My thought is that he buried this stuff the idea being that he would, you know, head back to civilization and at some later date come back and retrieve the ransom, which I believe he did some months later. But I do believe $6,000 of it was left behind accidentally, and that is the money that Brian Ingram found in 1980. Now let's talk about the parachutes, the two parachutes, and that attache case that, that carried the bomb. They've never been found. And it appears to me that part of the reason they have never been found is because D.B. Cooper also opted to bury these items at the same time as he buried the money. He apparently didn't just stash them under a sticker bush or what have you, because certainly sometime during the last 50 years, somebody would have found something because that area around Tina Bar is actually quite agricultural. So the land is worked. So something would have been found. So it appears to me that he opted to bury all of the items. But I don't think he opted to just dig one big pit or you know scrape out one big pit in the sand and throw everything in one big pit. It makes sense to me that he probably dug three smaller sized holes because three smaller sized holes are easier to dig than one gigantic pit, especially if you don't have a shovel or anything like that. You're working with your hands or you know a stick laying on the ground or something like that. So, we know where the money was found, and obviously there was an awful lot of searching that took place right there, and nothing else was ever found. Now, I highly suspect that the parachutes and the briefcase were actually buried very near the money, and I suspect that they are buried from the money, somewhere between the money find spot and that dirt road that I referenced that the FBI used to access Tina Bar. And again, notably, that's one area that they did not search. And if those items were buried in that spot, that area, indeed, the FBI could have literally been within feet of the parachutes and the attache keys, perhaps even walking right on top of them, just not realizing it. Because apparently the FBI was thinking at the time in 1980 that the money must have come from the river up to the burial spot. Therefore, they started searching from the burial spot back down toward the river, not entertaining for a moment that perhaps the money actually came from the dirt road. Meaning D.B. Cooper walking along that dirt road, walked down from the dirt road and buried the money and everything else. So this is where serendipity plays a part as far as this whole story is concerned. As I mentioned, there's been an enormous amount of erosion at Tina Bar, but there is one part of the beach that still exists today that didn't erode away. And it just so happens to be that area of the beach that I'm referencing between the money find spot and that dirt road. There's about, again, you know, 40, 45 foot of beach back then in 1980 where this stuff would have been buried. And that part is largely intact today. But there's a challenge. The challenge is, is that about 10 years ago or so, I'm not exactly sure of the precise date, uh, there are these very large boulders affixed to the water's edge to prevent any additional erosion, erosion taking place. Additionally, on top of the beach itself there, there was dumped about two or three feet of this rock and dirt mixture right on top of the beach. So effectively, that, that part of the beach that was still basically in its original state 
effectively it's locked in a, in a time capsule right now. It's got the boulders at the you know river's edge, but it's also got about three feet of very compact dirt and rock mixture placed on top of it. So while I'm up there digging and searching for this stuff and seeing if anything was buried on the beach there, the very first thing that I have to do and those who have volunteered with me is we've got to dig through that top two or three feet layer of very hard dirt and rock. It's not that D.B. Cooper had to deal with that back in 1971. It's just that Eric Eulis has to deal with it here in you know 2021 or 2022. So let me show you a couple of pictures that'll help illustrate uh, kind of what I've talked about here. Okay, so this very first picture is from 1980, and I realize this isn't a, a very good picture. It's from a newspaper, but it's from 1980, and it shows the FBI agents actually uh, searching Tina Bar, looking for anything else. Now you'll notice on the upper right-hand portion of the picture, there's this yellow dot. That yellow dot marks where the money was found. Now notice how much beach there is between that money find spot, that yellow dot, and the Columbia River off to the left there. That's an awful lot of beach there. Now the second picture I'm going to show you here is from a drone in 2021, and it's of the same area of Tina Bar. And there are a few spots that I've pointed out here. So first of all, we've got the black dot with the yellow border. That denotes the money find spot. That's the money find spot today. So you can see in this image, again, 2021, that the money find spot on this particular day is actually about 15 feet offshore. It's no longer, you know, 45 feet from the water's edge. It's actually about 15 feet offshore. And the depth of the water at this point is probably about a foot and a half deep. Uh, the other spot that I want to point out to the left of that is that white dot with the red border. Now, that's the river's edge. That's approximately the, where the river's edge was in 1980. So you can see there's been an enormous amount of erosion that has taken place. All of that sand that made up the beach back then that you saw in the previous picture from 1980 has been completely swept into the river and um, I guess probably dredged out at some point and placed somewhere up on higher land. Now the final dot that I want to show you or spot that I want to show you is the, the one that's to the far right and that's the black dot that has the white border. Now that's the dig spot. That's the actual spot that I'm digging at and that part of the beach that I'm working on and it's again beach is really a misnomer nowadays because there's a lot of rock and other crap thrown up there but that back then in 1980 was was beach it was nothing but just beach sand so that's where I'm digging today so uh, my thought is that that's where those items are sitting essentially locked into a time capsule and like I've said before, it's one thing to have a thought. It's the one thing to have a theory about this stuff. At the end of the day, there's really no replacement for actually putting boots on the ground and actually, frankly, just muscling through the stuff and digging and seeing if we can find something. So the hope is that this year, 2022, that we're going to find something. The parachutes or the briefcase with the bomb or perhaps some of that missing $194,000 of D.B. Cooper's ransom. All right, folks, that's it. That's what I bring to the table today. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to shoot me an email, eric at ericulis.com. Until next time, 